Hello and welcome to the first in what will be a series of videos on Audioscope. Now for any of you that haven't seen the preview video for Audioscope, I suggest you go and watch that before trying to uh, understand these masterclasses because we go over the basics of what Audioscope does in that video. So let's start with AUM and let's add a couple of uh, audio channels to AUM and in each of the audio channels we're going to add an instrument now for this example i'm going to pick a copy of uh, synthmaster uh, to insert in the instrument slot so once the instrument is set up we need to insert a copy of audio scope at the end of the effects chain on each track of our daw now I want you to notice here that there are two versions of Audioscope. There's an Audioscope and an Audioscope MIDI. And the MIDI version is what you would pick if you wanted to control various aspects of your MIDI. In this case, I've just picked the standard version of Audioscope. Now let's tap on the Audioscope icon to open up the interface. And if, if we double tap on the title bar, we can open full screen. Now the thing I want to draw your attention to is this control bar at the top left. If we tap on the control button we'll get a menu of all instances of Audioscope that are currently loaded. In this case we see Audioscope 01 which is not really descriptive. So the first thing you need to do is tap on the name button and give that track or this instance of Audioscope a name. So in this case I've called it bass. Uh, but you would name it after whatever instrument you had loaded on that particular track. And if we click on the control uh, button, you can see that the menu uh, contains the renamed instance. Now, all you need to do really is repeat this process uh, for every single track. So you would load your instrument and then add an instance of Audioscope to the end of your effect chain. And again, give uh, that instance a meaningful name. So now if we look back at the control menu, you'll see our two instances there and uh, all named and ready to go. Now, if we're working inside of Cubasis 3, we open up the uh, insert effects list and uh, tap on the end of that list to add a copy of Audioscope. That's a good idea to go full screen here and don't forget to rename the track in this case it's a guitar track and as i mentioned before we'd repeat that process for any track we want to monitor inside of audioscope now if you're running under loopy pro you really need to, need to click on the microphone icon uh, on the input channel and turn off echo cancellation because if you don't do this uh, panning doesn't work uh, as expected so uh, turn this option off now to add an instance of Audioscope, just click on the uh, Post Fader Plus button, uh, in this case on the purple channel. Select uh, an instance of Audioscope from the pop-up menu. And if we tap the, um, the icon, double tap the title, we can then name this instance. Just remember, name the instances, otherwise it gets kind of confusing. And as before, just do that for every track that you want to be uh, uh, available in live mix mode. And finally, if you're a GarageBand user, you can uh, add a copy of Audioscope to your insert effects, just as you would with any other AUV3. Now, the only important thing here is make sure you go as far down this list uh, as you can. You want it inserted after any other AUV3s, if possible. Now once inserted we can tap on the icon to open up the effect and don't forget to rename each instance. Now you can go full screen by clicking the, uh, the button in the bottom right if you wish. So now the hard bit is over we can take a look at how to use Audioscope in a live mix situation. So as you can see here I have a number of instruments each with a instance of audioscope on there and if i open up any one of these instances and open up the control menu we can see every instance uh, freely available from this menu 
Now we have the bass drum selected in that control instance menu and if we take a look at the bottom of the screen here we have a set of five tool buttons starting with EQ, Live Mix, Shelf Filters, Peak Filters and finally the Compressor. And each of these screens represents the settings for the bass drum in this case. But I'm going to flick to the Live Mix mode because that's what we're, we're discussing today. And on selecting this uh, this tool, you can see that the window is empty. And that's because the bass drum is not opted in to Live Mix. Now, the easiest way to opt the bass drum into Live Mix is just to long press that button. And an icon will appear on screen representing the bass drum. And this can be freely dragged around this window. Now, I'm going to switch control to the strings track and you'll immediately see that that bass drum icon gets kind of greyed out and uh, if we long press the mix button we'll opt the strings track into live mix and again we can move this around now it's important to note that dragging left in this window would pan to the left and dragging right would pan to the right forwards and backwards uh, in that uh, mix window just represents a volume level so the higher up that uh, that icon the louder it is so let's take a listen to that in action <laughs> Now I push that instance of the bass drum uh, up quite high and the reason being that I wanted to demonstrate what happens uh, when an instance peaks. Now if I just tap on any one of these icons it becomes the control instance and if I drag this forward so it's extremely loud you'll see that the little animated uh, marching ants around that, uh, that uh, icon turn red representing the fact that that has peaked and clipping has occurred so it's a good idea to then back that off in the mix. Now we saw there how we can opt a track into the live mix just by long pressing the mix button but that would be a bit tedious if we have lots of tracks. So if we head off to the main menu and look in the live mix options there's an option here to enable all instances but by default each track is centrally panned and is at 0 dB so <laughs> they're all stacked on top of each other now to get around that the best thing to do is open up the mix bar on the bottom of the screen here and long press the stereo button which is a little shortcut to uh, initialize the mix which actually brings everything down in the mix and spreads the tracks out so they're easily readable now I've happened to notice that this track uh, here is actually a master track and that shouldn't take part in the mix, in the live mix. So I'm going to long press the live mix button and that track will re be removed from the live mix. Now the best thing to do now is start moving things forward in the mix. And my advice would be to start with anything that's centrally panned, such as uh, bass drum or bass or kick, snare and so on and then start positioning other elements around that it, um, balanced either left or right depending on your preference now audioscope supports up to 32 tracks and i only have 16 here so as you can imagine by the time i've placed all these it can get a little bit crowded so it's a good idea to assign these tracks to different subgroups and work on them separately and we can do that using the group filter at the bottom of the display. So to assign the bass drum to a specific group, we need to open the mix bar. And then with the bass drum selected, press the group button and then select a group from the, this list. Now simply repeat that for each track. And then once your tracks have been assigned groups, we can just use the group filter to filter those particular tracks. A focus on a smaller number of, um, of, of, of objects which is easier to place. So as well as being able to pan left to right and uh, control the volume within live mix mode 
We can also control the stereo widening. So as well as being able to drag these around, if we pinch to zoom on any of these uh, selected items, uh, we control the stereo width and we can go anywhere up to 200% which is kind of ultra wide. 100% uh, is normal stereo when we can go all the way down to 0% uh, which is pure mono. Now we have an easier way to look at this. Um, if we press the options button we can change the actual style. And as you can see here, the uh, the bass drum is now mono, and that's represented by a plain circle. And if I select the lead, we can actually pinch to zoom and make that ultra wide. Alternatively, I can click on the stereo button in the mix bar and quickly change using this slider. <laughs> So hopefully you could hear the stereo widening on those strings there. Now the live mix bar has plenty of other options which are going to be useful to you including the mute and solo buttons. Now I've currently got the strings selected and if I press the mute button it will mute the strings just as you would expect. Press the mute button again and we unmute those strings. But if we hit the uh, solo button uh, obviously the strings are going to be the only thing we hear and with solo selected we can select other tracks and the solo will be passed on to that track obviously with the marching ants around the various tracks we can see what's currently playing now on the far right of the mix bar there are an up and down arrows and those allow us to move everything forward and backwards in the mix by 0.25 dB and to the left of that is the lock mix button which prevents us from accidentally swiping on the screen and uh, changing the mix Now the final three buttons that we haven't yet discussed are the mix buttons A, B and C I'm going to take a look at them now. Now just suppose that we'd uh, laid these uh, instruments out in a position that sounded pretty good and we wanted to save that mix. We could just long press on mix A and you'll see that the mix A button is now lit up indicating that there's a mix there. Now let's assume we rearranged the mix and made changes to it and we wanted to compare that mix with mix A. We can simply long press the mix B button to store that mix. And I'm going to go a step further and just move a few of these around uh, the stereo balance around and save a third mix here just by long pressing mix C. Now we have three mixes saved and uh, we could simply press any of these mix buttons to switch immediately between the mixes and then we can we can preview those and find out which ones we actually prefer now if we want to overwrite or delete any of these mixes we just simply long press on that mix and we get a choice of delete or overwrite now it's important to note that um, when we save these mixes it saves all the settings within the app so that includes EQ settings, compressor settings and, and so on. So it's a nice way to compare a whole mix and, uh, and, uh, and, and keep tweaking until you find something that you really like. Now if you want to bypass any instance of Audioscope, you can simply press the power button in the top right corner. Now if you want to bypass all instances of Audioscope, we can press this pass through button in the bottom left corner and that will effectively uh, remove uh, the um, audioscope from all, from all instances and you'll hear the raw track uh, from your DAW. So that's just about it for live mix mode but in the next masterclass we'll look over the other tools including how to use snapshots and uh, compressors and EQ and so on but for now don't forget to subscribe to the channel 
thumb up the video and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.